All right, so I have mocked up the uh, my T onto a test stand. This, and in order to get it to balance with the camera and the focal reducer and the, the scope, uh, along with the rings that hold it, the parallax rings, um, I did need the third uh, counterweight. Those are all three 20 pounders. So I'm kind of reaching my payload capacity here. Um, and the other thing is, as it is right now with the Versa plate turned like so, um, the internal screws here, uh, these are for sliding the Versa plate for balance. And right now it's, as you can tell, it's pushed as far up this way as it can get in those channels where those are, are, uh, those are aligned. So that means that the scope is pushed as far up this way as it can be, um, and it will not balance in declination. The, the back just has too much going on. Um, and the thing is, with it being in the parallax rings and not no longer having a Lasmandi bar, um, I don't have a way right now. I had some little uh, slider weights that I could attach to the bar up here to counterbalance it. But as it is now, I don't have that Las Mandy bar anymore, and so I can't counterbalance by putting uh, some weights up front. So I've got to figure out something, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Versa plate off and install it uh, backwards where the the uh, cable attachments are at the front, because then that'll push the rings more this way. Uh, and that'll let me in, uh, balance it, I hope. If I, if I just turn the Versa plate 180, I'll be able to slide all of this up this way a good three or four inches, and I'm hoping that that'll let me uh, balance it. All right, so I've tried to turn the Versa plate around, but I'm, I'm kind of new at this, and I've realized you can't do it because there is a channel that runs uh, under here for this uh, cable. And you can probably see it right there. There's a channel there. And then right inside here, there is a channel uh, cut into the metal there. And that channel would be right here. So there is no channel there for this cable. So you can't take the Versa plate and mount it backwards. I think what I'm going to have to do is um, I took the, the other ring off. I'm gonna move this ring as forward as I can and try to mount that ring um, somewhere as, as far forward as I can. Probably this hole is the furthest I can get. Um, that'll push it up a couple of inches, but I'm still worried that I'm not gonna be able to get it to balance. Okay, so this is the moment that you realize you're trying to hang too much off the back end. Uh, so this is with the scope and the rings and moved all the way max to the front as you can tell the way that i've got uh, the rings mounted is as far as i know how to mount them up uh, as forward as it'll get and still you can see uh, if i just let go it's obviously balanced uh, towards the rear heavy another option would be uh, to find a way to put a counterweight up here um, that was how I had to do it on my other, on my Celestron mount. Um, this is just not going to balance by any means. It's way too back heavy. So with the focal reducer off, and, and by weighing it now, it, the focal reducer probably weighs about half of what the image train is. So um, with the focal reducer completely off now, it actually feels like, because the mirror cells back here is pretty heavy, I guess. It feels like it's about critically balanced. It's, it actually feels balanced in this position, but that's with no image train. And, this, and it's pushed up as far forward as, as I can get it. So with no image train, uh, I don't know. I mean, it feels... It's just about balance right now. What am I going to do to put a camera on the end of this uh, remains to be seen. All right, I came to a solution. 
If I had a little while longer, I might have ordered a small piece of Las Mandy bar like this. I'm sure they make them a little bracket like that. Um, but as it is, I'm trying to get things up and going and I don't want to wait around a couple weeks for that. So I sacrificed my old Las Mandy bar. I got a, a cut off wheel, a bandsaw, something, chopped the end of that sucker off. I used the screws to fasten that in there. It's nice and secure. And then um, I use this to snug it up. And now, um, if I and now if I go to balance mode, um, it's very much front heavy, so I have to be careful here. Um, but I think that that's going to help me uh, finally achieve balance. Well, here's how I wound up solving my balance issues uh, with the Paramount My T and the telescope. Um, you can see the edge over there. It's got a lot of stuff going on at the back. So what I did was uh, the parallax rings normally come with um, holes tapped um, and threaded for this line of holes It's uh, that are matched up here. And if you notice on these outside, there are holes here uh, and not on the center row because the center row is where it's attached here to be able to let you slide the VersaPlate back and forwards. So... Um, with the holes on the outside, I didn't have a way to attach it, but I did have a machine shop at our school. And so what I did is I, I carefully marked these holes. Um, I went up underneath here with a with actually a, a drill bit and marked that hole and then went over to the other side and uh, marked it here. And you can see it's actually a pretty, pretty tight uh, tolerance there. Um, so there was plenty of meat there to drill into is what I'm saying. Um, and so I've mounted that. If you count them up, there's there's 16 holes on here. And I put this, uh, this would be the eighth hole. I put it on the seventh hole and it's uh, hopefully a little bit, you can tell it's a little bit towards the backs, off, off the center line of the scope towards the rear, just a little bit, but it's just enough. And so um, I'll roll in a picture here of the finished product. Um, and this is is a good arrangement. It works. It lets me slide the telescope up far enough where I'm still gripping on the main uh, body of the OTA. Um, and actually I have about a quarter of an inch to spare if I have the focal reducer on there and then I have some uh, the the weights that you can see in the picture. If I have those weights and that on there and the little piggyback scope, then it will balance. Um, the only other thing is balancing an RA. It's about, it feels like it's about four or five pounds shy of being able to balance with the three counterweights. So I'm just gonna go get uh, a small weight to attach to the bottom of this um, to finish out balancing in the RA. Uh, that's not a big problem. And then on the deck, it, it balances out even with this thing up here on the piggyback. Um, you'll also notice that this is a AstroTech scope and I, I removed the uh, uh, dew shield from the front of it um, because it actually, these rings are for a, a little bit wider part of the body. They, they they work here, but they don't work on the body. But I found that if you take off the dew shield, uh, the front ring where the front cell is, it'll actually, uh, it's just just wide enough to let you clamp onto that. And then I could clamp onto the uh, the focuser body here with a little help from a, uh, some weather strip gasket. Um, and doing that, let me space them out th to this spacing and still mount that little scope up there. And weighing everything together, including the weight of the parallax rings, it comes into 52 pounds. I I'm pretty sure that that limit is, is on the conservative side. So I'm going to go with my 52, 53 pounds. And, uh, and I guess I am a little bit over because I have 60 pounds of counterweight. So it'll wind up being about um, 110 if I do my math right. So... Um, but it will balance and I'm, uh, going to see what kind of performance I can get out of it. So fingers crossed, hopefully it'll work.